Welcome to Simpler. We are three pastors, husbands, and fathers on a journey to make life simpler by holding Jesus as the core for every belief and practice. This journey has shaped us to be more like Christ, freed us from the shame of failure, and encouraged us to a deeper love of our Lord and God. We invite you to join us in the discussions that have shaped and continue to shape our lives. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. It's Thanksgiving week, and everybody's prepping all that fun stuff. So what's funny is uh, this is my first year to do Thanksgiving at my wife's house. Uh, when we were when we were engaged. But y'all live in the same house? No, we don't. Yeah. <laughs> COVID. <laughs> that didn't even cross my mind. My wife's family. They're there going go, to see go. my wife's family in Florida. We did Thanksgiving when we were engaged in Oklahoma to go see her extended family, but I've never done it in Floyd data. And so it's always interesting to know like how people prep, what people do, all that fun stuff of stuff. Is there any type of Thanksgiving um, traditions that you guys have that you really enjoy to do every year? I like to eat. True. Is there like, is there like, I know you mentioned Christmas candy last episode. Is there yeah. like a dish that you're like, I have to make this or I have to have my wife make this every year? I, um, my mother-in-law makes a really good dressing, it's a mm. good, you know, stuffing dressing, whatever you want to call it. And I really enjoy dressing at Thanksgiving. That's another thing. We talked about that last time too. Like, wh- why can't we have dressing more often? <laughs> what's That's wrong true. with that? You know what's funny though is, oh, wow. <laughs> did, did, did you feel that? Did you spit I on me? I spit so COVID, it, man. It flew. Come on. They're really right about those, man. That was a good <laughs> six feet right there. <laughs> wow. I you know what's funny it. is like, yeah, exactly. You've already got it. It's just like chicken pox. You've already right. got it. It's it's you're done. done. Uh, like Texas, West Texas uh, buffets. Yeah. I feel like they always have stuffing. Yeah, yeah. And it al- they always have like that's the true. Thanksgiving dinner part of the buffet. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm here to speak truth and that's it. That's true. How do you I'm here feel, how do you feel, feel about okay. the Double Dave's Thanksgiving pizza? That is disgusting. You're have you seen me? it? No. Does it have turkey? Yeah, it has turkey and it has, uh, <clears throat> has dressing and it has cranberries. Is it? But okay, so do they change the like the basic parts of it? Like, do they change the dough to be like more of like a biscuit type I, I, thing? I truly don't know. I won't ever eat it. Like, I'm not going to spend money on that. If it was like, here's a double day's pizza that we just put Thanksgiving stuff on, I hate it. <laughs> but if it's like, but if it's like, hey, we made we have like a very specific like biscuit dough. I mean, or like that a, would be like with your Thanksgiving meal normally, like taking a roll and putting some turkey and cranberries exactly. and mashed and potatoes and stuff in it. Yeah, it's kind of like that. So it's kind of like a turkey. It's kind of yeah. like a Thanksgiving leftover sandwich. I have a terrible, a terrible part. cranberry story. Please tell me. So, um, was that a, a terrible story? I mean, is it a, the band of cranberries? Or? Oh, man, I like the cranberries. That would never be yeah. a terrible story. Zombie. Like <laughs> yeah. Um, I was at a church, I think it was my dad's church, like a Thanksgiving dinner. And it was one of those potluck dinners. Like yeah. the church brings, like the, the yes. church provides a turkey and everybody brings all the mm-hmm. sides. Well, I was going through the line and got some of the uh, like the sliced cranberry sauce, mm-hmm. yeah. um, the canned kind. Which yeah, is, yeah. I like so, it. and it was you know it was like laid out really nice and mm-hmm. neat. So I grabbed some and put it on my plate, and I got back to the table and started eating. I pitched you grabbing it with I, your hands. That'd be funny. I probably did. COVID. Anyways, anyway, but I, I, I took a bite of that cranberry sauce and like spit it out like that choke and I was like what is wrong with this cranberry sauce <laughs> and I was like it's hard and it's bitter oh. and it wasn't cranberry sauce someone had cut up beets and yeah. made it look like cranberry sauce <laughs> no thanks I was like, are you freaking kidding me like what a ugh. no thanks ugh. that's like that okay so what do we have last time the plaster caster Micah's noodle <laughs> we need to figure out like a prank thing for for church <laughs> to like put us back like, to mirror there or to look like a certain dish the beets is brilliant I've never We've talked to, uh, Hannah is watching The Office again, kind of in the background. And we've, every time Dwight gets brought up, we realize like neither one of us have ever had beats. I've just never had, never <laughs> been exposed to beats. I've never had someone offer me beats. I don't feel the need. I just, yeah. Well, it's what's strange. I've made it 45 not, years without beats. I think yeah. I'm good. I would have preferred to make it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and now hearing your experience, I'm like, I just, I can't do it. Uh, I don't care for beats. Uh let us know if you've ever had beets. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hashtag beets. Yeah. <laughs> let us, make let us make your case for beets. <laughs> like, hey, Dwight, the, if you're listening, <laughs> let beets, us know. Bears, Battlestar Galactica. <laughs> there you go. Give us your best, best beets recipe. Uh, let us know. True farms. We, also, Double Dave's, if you need to sponsor any podcast, we're here. We'll, hey, we, we'll have the Double Dave's. We pizza. love you, but man, like, okay. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So this, this week on, uh, Pierce's Culture Corner, the PCC, uh, or the PKK, if you're going for like the kids camp vibe, because you know kids corner, uh, the PCC. <laughs> I like that better. What's the drug? PCP. Yeah, Pierce's, let's not do that. 
Pierce's cultural they pontification. Just, pontification. They just, Welcome to PCP. <laughs> didn't they just legalize stuff like that up in the Northwest? Oh, good. Somewhere? I hope so. It's pretty lit up there, man. <laughs> not not going to lie. Anyway, so we're not going to... This isn't PCP. <laughs> this is PCC. Way different. Uh, so this isn't... Mm, this isn't so much as I've been <laughs> trying. I have like any sort of like uh, conclusions. It's just more so the iPhone 12 is coming out. 5G, yeah. the way that the Apple has promoted this is 5G just got real. Well, 5G has been real for like a year. Um, ish. Ish. But yeah. like, but if you look back at like this, they've been slowly pumping out smartphones. Like the first 5G Samsung was like probably in the spring sometime, mm -hmm. but it couldn't do much except for like in New York and different places like that. And there's a few, uh, M oh gosh, MKHD or MKBHD? Marquise Brownlee, if anybody watches Marquise Brownlee, uh, he actually went to Rhode Island to, or one of the islands up there somewhere to so go to the, like the first <laughs> We don't know 5G. his name and we're not it's sure where he went. I know his name. My name is Marquise Brownlee. I don't know his tag. Okay, okay, <laughs> so, okay. MKBHD or something like that. I don't know where he went. He went somewhere where there's 5G, the mystical land of 5G. He went there and it is wild. Like it's stupid fast. But that was back in the spring. It had to be pre-COVID, I feel like. Yeah. Because he was traveling openly and then walking throughout the streets with no mask on or anything. So, yeah. Um, and that was the how, that's how you know COVID. Right. Uh, but it was stupid fast. I listened to a podcast which Mr. Who's the Boss? I know his tag, but I don't know his real name. There we go. Tony Danza? So we're switching it around. No, that's what you think, right? They're bringing that back. Are you serious? Yeah. With Tony Danza? With Tony Danza, with the cast from the original, except for Mona, I think. because I And think he's a grandpa. Well, it, and they're, I don't know. I don't know what they're doing, but they're bringing it back for and a it's short about 5G. Run. Yeah, it is. Tony Danza. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah. Uh, was it? Hold me closer, Tony Danza. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Elton John, uh, his famous song. Uh, exactly. <laughs> it's coming back. <laughs> oh, man. So, Mr. Mister, Who's the Boss, who's not Tony Danza or Elton John, he did a podcast with T-Mobile called uh, This Time Tomorrow, which just talked about the capabilities of 5G and what it could mean for society. One of the things that, that always stuck with me, because I have a buddy of mine uh, who's really close with a firefighter friend, and they, they just talked about how firefighting, there's so much... Um, you show up to an event and you just got to like take everything as it comes. Like, cause sure. you don't really know all the details until you get in the building. And even then you just smoke everywhere. And so one of the big things about 5G and the way they talk about it on the podcast blows my mind. I'd love to see it in action because the only way I can vision it right now is like you're playing a first person shooter video game. Because what they said is they're able to have in goggles, because you guys remember Google Glass and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. They're able to kind of have an image up here in your goggles that you can see. And they're able to send out drones that can basically map out your environment for you. And it, you're giving it, you're getting a live feed of the drones up in your goggles. So you can actually see how, what's happening around the building as you're in the building. And it's basically That's like cool. mapping it out and stuff huh. like that. So in essence, it's a first, it's a first, you got your ax in hand and you're first person like destroying walls, trying to get families out of there and stuff like that. But they interviewed a fire chief and they just talked about how him even seeing some of this technology, how monumental it is because there's just so many situations where he's like, I just don't know if my team's going to come back. Like, I don't know yeah. who's, I don't know what else is going to happen. And so what I love about this podcast is I talked a little bit last time about like conditioning the public for certain things. But what I love about this podcast is that it made an entertaining, like a weekly episodic thing. Uh, just talking about the implications for society, what 5G will do. Because there's a lot of people, there's the, the memes get started, then people believe it. Of like, well, right. there's new 5G antennas. Well, that's all going to give us cancer. You guys remember the <laughs> smartphone thing? And then Samsung made smartphones that blew up. And so that didn't help anybody out. So, right. uh, so I love that this is a podcast just saying, hey, here's the strides we're making in technology. And it's building upon what we've already done, which is all technology has ever done. And they're saying, hey, Look at how great this can be for these different groups. And they talk about uh, the implications for college. There, there's also um, one of the things they do with um, prisoners. is they, One of the biggest things for prisoners coming about, back into society is just social skills and things like that. And just not really knowing how to interact with people. Because if, you're, if, you're, if you serve your time of like 10 to 15 years, things have drastically changed. Yeah, for sure. And so they're having these, like, uh, these things that people can do live but not really we're like i put on a headset and then this guy is seeing everything i see in prison but he's seeing it as it's happening and so there's a level of like real-time events um with with these certain teams that are trained that they can do something they can say there's a team in texas they can basically interact in person or uh in real time virtually with yeah. people all around the world and so you can really just have to train if one team is really good then they can do all of it from their one location because of the speeds and the and the fastness of 5g they even talked about surgeries being done over 5g networks like from china in america like how you can do it in real time like actually control a robot to do surgery it's mind-blowing the capabilities of it and now that Apple's actually releasing phones that are 5G capable, there is an aspect of it four that— Four of them. 
four of them, a real small one and a real big one and everything in between. Uh, now that they their, their ad is actually absolutely genius for them to say 5G just got real because as a society, ever since 2007, when Apple jumps on board with something, that is really the culture yeah. definer. Now, everybody with Android and PC come at me, but it's true. Like you Boo. can't, you can't argue with that. Yeah. You can't argue that once Apple gets on board with something, that's when it really integrates in society. So all that to say, like I said, I don't really have any concrete uh, thoughts necessarily on this. You just like I, it. I just excited am really about excited about 5G. And my question for you guys is, if you have an iPhone 12, if you have a 5G capable phone, it doesn't have to be an iPhone 12, just any 5G capable phone, just should and be. you live in an area, send them to me. <laughs> <laughs> if you live in an area where... Uh, where you have either 5G ultra wide or just kind of what they're calling like a blanket, uh, a blanket area that's activated through 5G. Let us know how, I want to know what that's like. I like, want to know I, how cool it is. I really, I kind of do. Like, is it as much the as they hyped it up? I won't have it for 10 years. Yeah, I know. Is it as <laughs> much as they hyped it up or do they need to get like 10 million more antennas out there? Like, are we really as far behind as some people say? Or is it as good as some people say? I'm just curious. Like, I want to hear more real voices instead of all the ads. And I know that we'll get that as time progresses, but I want it now. So, <laughs> Get, please just tell me. Just stop holding it back and tell me. Man, people are so stingy with their 5G. I don't know why they won't tell me right now. It's really upsetting me Come that on. they won't just jump through the camera. Listen, and, and let wherever me know. you're listening to this, I'll just call out some people. Allison, you're listening to it. Wendy, you're listening to it. Katie, Luke. Right. Yeah. I mean, so they're here. Karina, they're but, listening to it. Like, yeah. I mean, you just need to stop right now. I bet there's a John listening to it. John. 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 Come on, man. Get off your plaster caster. Yeah. And, and tell me about 5G. <laughs> And then let us know. Like, just pause the podcast and shoot Pierce a text. Please don't shoot Pierce. Oh, shoot Pierce a text. Well, this, this podcast is about thankfulness. And I know that uh, my buddy Miles Moore is all of a sudden not thankful because he is the epitome of anti-Apple. <laughs> <laughs> we love you, Miles Moore. Dude, uh, let's talk. Oh, goodness. Wow, okay. Hey, I'm, what is in this water? <laughs> PC uh, minerals. <laughs> if you're going to text me, text me about your Android 5G phone. I built a PC this year. Let's talk about it. <laughs> like, I had a fun time. I went back to Apple. But I had- <laughs> <laughs> but I had a fun time while I was doing it. What are we oh, talking man. about, Pierce? We're talking about thankfulness. I'm thankful for... Uh, here's my one. Let's, let me figure out a segue. Give me a second. I, you know what, man? <laughs> 5G sounds dope, and I'm thankful for it. Speaking of thankfulness... <laughs> speaking of thankfulness. <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving. It's the week of Thanksgiving. Ryan, introduce what we're talking about today in regards to thankfulness. Hey, well, we're thankful for you guys who are listening Absolutely. and making yes. this podcast uh, possible. We're so excited that you guys have been listening. It's super encouraging. Um, it, you know, we want this podcast to be a little bit lighthearted. And um, I think, you know, we talked last time about the theology of thankfulness. Uh, but the reality is that we have, uh, as the three of us here, we have a lot of things that we're thankful for. And yeah. people who have poured into our lives and our wives and kids and different things. and and um. And undoubtedly, as you guys prepare, it's, it's Tuesday. Our My kids, I don't know. Uh, what's San Angelo doing? Did they get the whole week off? Were they off on Monday? Um, our, our boys get out today. They go through Tuesday, and it's because we started late. I bet you guys have the whole week off, but I don't pay attention because I don't live in town anymore. Anyway, uh, our boys get out of school today, and then we're taking the rest of the week off. We're hosting Thanksgiving dinner at our house this year. Nice. And um, um, it you can't help but kind of think about like, hey, what are you thankful for? What are some things that you're yeah. thankful for? And I think I think maybe it's kind of hard to do in a year like 2020 mm-hmm. where it's been really, really crazy. Um, for me personally, 2020 hasn't been emotionally as difficult as 2019 was, but uh, man, I'm just, I'm just thankful for a lot of things. I, I think about where I am as a person and um, as a man, as a husband um, in ministry. And there's a lot of people uh, that I am thankful to that have poured into me through the years and helped me get here. And so we just kind of want to talk about that and reflect on some of those things with you guys and tell you guys some of our stories and and the ways that God has blessed us and the people who have blessed us and maybe allow you to be reflective also on some things that you're thankful for. So I'll, I'll start and say that uh, uh, I started Higher Rock Ministries, the, the ministry that I only recently have just stepped away from to just do church with you guys full time. But I started Higher Rock Ministries in 1997. Um, I was 22. And, uh, and I, and the guy who really helped me get it started was John Randalls, who a lot of people know he was traveling and preaching all over the place. He lived in Lubbock. I was in Lubbock and he spent a lot of time with me. He died a couple of years back. Mm -hmm. Um, but he spent a lot of time with me, like taking me to breakfast and hanging out with me. Not, not just telling me like the practical side of how to fill out paperwork and those kinds of things, but really encouraging me in ministry and really encouraging me 
to uh, like how to get started and and how to how to preach and how to proclaim the word of God. And I remember the very first two opportunities that I ever had to preach to a large crowd were at events that he did. Yeah, uh, we started Paradigm there in Lubbock, Texas, when I was about twenty two. Uh, I said we started it. I wasn't part of that team, <laughs> yeah. but I lived there and. <laughs> All of my friends were that team, Justin Cofield and um, all these guys that were leading it back then were good friends of mine. They were all part of the ministry I was part of. And um, and John Randalls, one day, he just said, he goes, hey, this next week at Paradigm, he goes, you're preaching for five minutes before me. Hmm. And it, it it was the hardest sermon probably, well, last time I said it was the hardest sermon. That wow. one actually was. What is it? I know. <laughs> it, it took a lot of prep because it's hard to say something in just five minutes, yeah. especially for me. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. We know that. But uh but he he gave me a lot of encouragement early mm-hmm. on and uh, when I didn't have a lot of confidence in in myself as a preacher. And so he was really instrumental in just helping get me, getting the ball rolling into getting me mm-hmm. into ministry. Mm-hmm. I appreciate that John Randall's rocked the mullet until his death. Yeah, day. forever. That dude. Until he died? Literally. That is dope. As yeah. far as I know. Honestly, I didn't see him. I mean. <laughs> no, he, he had, did. He had, he had that. We had cancer, didn't he? Yeah. I mean, so. I'm so. sure he probably lost his hair at the end. But he yeah, bought a mullet stuff. wig and it was awesome. <laughs> but right? that dude. Yeah. And he was so stinking that's, that's smart. That's confidence. Yeah. yeah. He was. Sure. Like, he was very smart. I think his doctor was in sociology or something like, like well, something he, else. But, but uh, he also had like a. Uh, I'm going to lie about him. I don't want to do that. But I believe he had a doctorate in like Roman history and stuff too. Oh, that's okay. cool. Um, and so like when he. I remember being at an event and I was at a and a time and somebody asked me a question about the cross because, you know, there's questions about, did the spike go through the hand of Jesus or through the wrist of Jesus, yeah. all this kind of stuff. And I said, well, I know a guy who would know, right? And I called him up and the dude answered mm-hmm. and just talked to me and mm-hmm. answered some questions. And like, he just, he's so, he was so smart, so generous with his time, so kind. Uh, it, I mean, just really like, I mean, he, he pressed me forward and pushed me forward into ministry. And, and gave me my start. And so uh, I, now I've been in ministry, you know, for 23 years and mm-hmm. and largely in part to the encouragement he gave me early on. I was I was still, I was on the back end of my depression. Like I was, I was still a couple of years from coming out of that really. But mm-hmm. he just, man, he was just a blessing to me. Yeah, there's a, usually during times like this when we're, I, where I'm really contemplating where that sounds, that sounds rude to start it off that way. But like when I'm really just assessing thankfulness, there's always one name that comes up in regards to uh, everything that's happened in San Angelo. And for me, when I was 12 years old, a girl by the name of Katie Nyland invited me to church. Yeah. And uh, I Katie. was, hey, we do love Katie. Hello, Katie. I know you're listening to this. Hello, Luke as well. You're probably listening together. What's yeah. up? How y'all doing? Uh, yeah. 12 years old, uh, Katie Nyland. I was friends with her in science class at Lee Middle school, which I mean, should be changing something else. Actually, it was Lee Junior High at the time. Then it was Lee it's Middle so School, dumb, and now man. it's going to be something else. Um, I hope they name it Pierce Love Middle School. There we go. That's what I'm hoping for. Uh, fingers crossed. But uh, she just invited me to Grace Simple. She invited me to Grace Simple Baptist Church, and that's where I met some people that I ended up. They ended up encouraging, like, "Hey, you want to be in a band?" <laughs> and they encouraged me to pick up a bass, and I began playing bass because of these guys. Uh, which led me into doing music ministry, which is actually ends up how I connected with you, Micah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was just a terrible bassist <laughs> for, for, <laughs> at, at that first camp that we did. Uh, and then leading ultimately to the 710, leading to the 456. And so there's so, literally everything in my ministry can go back to that one moment That's in awesome. seventh grade history, or excuse me, science class. I'm already changed my story. Seventh grade science class where Katie said, where she, gosh, if you're listening, Katie, I know you're listening. You were obnoxious back then. <laughs> but <laughs> wow. I remember. Katie, I am sorry. We we just got along. We really did. And she invited me to come hang out. And it was a fun Wednesday night youth experience. And I got plugged in pretty quick. And I was like, and it was so much of some, not only just the trajectory of my ministry from uh, from doing, doing music, doing ministry in bands to doing ministry through, uh, through playing worship with Micah. And then ultimately coming to the 456, but also so much of uh, just a shaping of my understanding of Christ. Yeah. Not only from like the teachers there, but the community that I was given. And I know I've mentioned a couple of times on here how heartbreaking it is when I hear just people that don't have, they just don't utilize the the resources of community around them. Yeah. And really a lot of that, the reason why it breaks my heart so much is because ever since I was 12, I had people around me that love Jesus yeah. and love the people around them. And then we begin to learn what it looks like. And then this group of people that I had, we're all in different places now. Um, 
But this group of people that started from junior high through high school into college, we were all sh- learning together. And so there's so many people within that group that I'm thankful for as well. Thankful for a friend named Landon. I'm thankful for uh, for Justin Smith, who's a part of the Vessel Church in yeah. town. He was at Grace Simple at the time. Mm-hmm. And so he was one of the first people that I really began to learn under. And yeah, he had uh, a big impact on you. He really did. And I, and I loved all of our time together. And there was there, We spent a lot of time together kind of as a group. And then also me and him would just hang out and we would go back. They had like this prayer room at Grace Simple and we'd just sit back there and pray together. And it was, cool. it was a ton of fun just and it shaped a lot. I mean, it's crazy to think just how much has changed since then, but it shaped so much and began to give and, uh, and show kind of the freedom in Christ. Yeah. That even though we were in this stereotypical Southern Baptist, it was a missional Baptist, but like a, in the South Baptist church, um, we weren't living by those stereotypes. And it was cool to like break free from the mold while we're also living in the mold, <laughs> if that makes sense at all. Um, it was a ton of fun. I love it. So I'm thankful for all of those people, but especially for Katie for kind of, for starting all Especially that and just kind of yeah. yeah being the impact cool. of that yeah so poor pierce the first time you played bass with me at a <laughs> camp i actually had another bass player it was one of those like in between summers when i didn't have a like a bass player i was using consistently that summer mm-hmm. i used a friend of pierce's named zach um who's a really good musician but for whatever reason zach <laughs> decided not to learn any of the songs he was playing with me that summer in <laughs> He would just ask me what key we were playing in, and he would just like hack it, and it was not good. <laughs> anyway, so Zach couldn't play the next camp after the one he played that was terrible with me. And so he was like, hey, I got this buddy named Pierce. I think you know him. And so Pierce came with me. But poor Pierce, the first camp he ever played with me was this giant stage. There was probably mm-hmm. 1,100 people there. And, you know, it's like the full full production, big lights and, you know, big sound system. And Pierce yeah. gets up and he's so nervous that first <laughs> night that his fingers lock up. On, For real. Like, like literally. Like he was. Well, and also John couldn't keep a freaking beat. Yeah, yeah. It was, so it's like, and that's all of that happening. Plus this. The tempo is all of a sudden five times faster. Yeah. Thanks, John Wiley, for your uh, superb <laughs> drumming skills. Anyways, but yeah, poor Pierce. That was his first experience with me, and and uh, you just kept calling and you back. Just, you stuck with me. Yeah, it worked. It worked, man. <laughs> yeah, that, that was my audition. And some, somehow you liked me. So thank you, Zach, for sucking so bad at a camp that oh, you introduced me. That I got brought up to that. taking shots at. <laughs> that's where that's people. where the podcast should go. Is that how many people screwed up so that we could shine? <laughs> wow. I want to go back a little bit farther as far as like, I think that this for me is always at the core of my thankfulness as far as who I am in Christ. And that was um, the family that brought my dad to the, mm. well, my dad came to the U.S. Um, as a 17 year old, as a foreign exchange student. And um, my dad, when he was in high school, before he came as an exchange student, was a um, like a rebel, like was, was one in of the, the Philippines, in the Philippines, yeah, yeah. like a protester against the dictator and against the corrupt government in the Philippines. And so when, when this family in Pampa, Texas, who had applied to, to receive a foreign exchange student, have a foreign exchange mm-hmm. student, um, got this phone call, the, the lady that worked at the office that was placing these foreign exchange students called them and said, Hey, we've got this, um, like last minute kid that's available we don't know if you'd want him. Nobody else seems to want him, but here's who he is. He's, you know, he's a smart kid, but he's involved in political activism. And he, you know, it's all these things that made him sound like this terrible kid. And um, the family, the Bruce's in Pampa, it was so cool. It was, uh, they were, they owned a moving and trucking company, but they also owned um, an oil company as well. And so they're, and they're all workers. Like, even though they own the company, they're all working. And this is back free cell phone. And so they're all on their CB radios. And Mrs. Bruce, <laughs> Um, radios, Mr. Bruce tells him what's going on. And so everybody on that channel, you know, and <laughs> can hear this whole thing. And so uh, she tells him and uh, he, I forget what he says. He says something like, well, let's pray about it. And so they literally start praying about getting my dad as a foreign exchange student on the CB radio. So like everybody in the That's oil awesome. fields hearing cool. this. So they pray about it. That. And yeah, super cool story. They pray about it, decide they want to take him. They bring my dad into their home and Long story short, my dad comes to know Jesus because of this family. And like today, they're my grandparents. Yeah. And they're my aunts and uncles. And yeah. they're my cousins. So I think for me, like that's awesome. Like where I am in ministry um comes back to that is like the core for me as far as um my faith, if you will, obviously is Jesus. But as far as yeah. like being led into it, the family that brought us into that um is not just some random family that shared the gospel with my dad, you know, and then my dad and mom shared the gospel with me, but it was someone, a, a family who's still involved in our lives today, that's still involved in ministry today, mm-hmm. um, still supports um, a lot of ministry my dad does, 
Um, and so it's just, it's pretty cool, I think, through the years to have some non-blood relatives. Yeah, um, my dad, awesome. I shared with you guys last time, was in the hospital with COVID um, and was in pretty bad shape. And I mean, my um, my family, my white family, <laughs> the Bruces, <laughs> I love that. Are, they are, they're calling and, and you would, like, if you overheard the conversations, you would have no idea that we're not technically blood related. Yeah. In fact, my dad, um, before he had to go to the hospital with COVID, I had pneumonia, went to the clinic. They gave him some uh, antibiotics and he started taking antibiotics and started feeling better. And so my dad loves to hike. And so the day after he started feeling better, even though he still had pneumonia, decided to go hike at the mm. state park and then got really sick again, obviously, because you just like wore your body down. Yeah. And so Mrs. Mrs. Bruce, when she found out about it, when we were, I was on the phone with her. She's like, I wish I'd just come down there and spank him. Like, <laughs> my dad's 65. You know what yeah. I mean? So like, she's still being mom. Yeah. You know, even then. So super thankful for the Bruce's for their willingness to, yeah. to love uh, the rebel kid <laughs> for the yeah. sake of Jesus. You know? Yeah, that's awesome. I had a, I had a pastor when I was 10. I, I, I became a Christian when I was three, almost four. I knew I wanted to preach at four. The church we went to until I was about 10 was super legalistic. Um, but I remember when we were about 10, we went to this other church in Midland and we had a pastor only for like a year and a half before he moved to College Station. So um, if you ever were around College Station uh, and you know Chris Osborne, who is left that church now he's on staff he just went on staff at southwestern mm. seminary um but uh he was the first preacher that i ever saw that didn't stand behind the pulpit and i remember being 10 years old and i didn't know that you could do that mm-hmm. because the pastor i had sat under was very formal and very hellfire and brimstone kind of guy said behind the pulpit very monotone and chris seemed excited like mm-hmm. about what he was teaching and mm-hmm. and um and he would walk back and forth and he would like, he was passionate about it, like excited about Jesus. And I hadn't ever really seen that before. Mm-hmm. And I remember being so impressed by that. Um, like it shaped me uh, mm-hmm. a lot. And, That's awesome. and it was funny because uh, I've seen him on Facebook and a couple of other places. He has no idea who I am, but I've reached out to him a couple of times and just told him, hey, you know, thanks so much. But like, he has no clue <laughs> who I am. <laughs> but I still think about him. You know, you're, you're talking about, you know, 35 years ago. Mm-hmm. And and I, I couldn't tell you, I can tell you one sermon he preached that had a, also a tremendous impact on my life. Um, it was a Wednesday night, I think. Um, but it was a night service for sure. And I remember him preaching about faith. It was the first time that I'd ever heard somebody preach about faith, but not for salvation, but just trusting God with everything in your life. Mm-hmm. And I remember getting up out of the middle of that service as a 10 year old boy and running to the bathroom, just crying and just going, man, I just realized I don't trust God for anything in my day to day. But I just remember he had such a tremendous impact on me, even as a 10 year old kid that, that I still like, I mean, we don't have a pulpit at our church, but like when I would go and preach Nor at a church, we ever have a pulpit. <laughs> yeah. But when I would go and preach at a church and they'd say, Hey, do you want us to leave the pulpit up? I was like, no, because like, I'm not going to stand behind it, you know? <laughs> yeah. And part of the reason I'm not going to stand behind <laughs> it is because this 10-year-old Ryan <laughs> loved Chris Osborne not standing yeah. behind the pulpit and pacing the stage and being like excited <laughs> and engaging and talking to the people. And like he probably got a bunch of crap for that too. He probably Back, did yeah. because you're talking about 85. You I know? was gonna say like 85. 65? <laughs> yeah, shut up. <laughs> you're talking about 1985, you know? Yeah. And it just it just wasn't normal. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. He was awesome though. I uh it doesn't really tie into that, but there well, actually, you know, it does. To. No, in regards to like, we're yeah, just talking about things yeah, no. you're thankful. Well, there, there was something that you said and I was like, well, it doesn't really tie into what you're saying, but you brought up passion. Uh, and I think that there was around the same time, kind of going very simple. There was a- 85? In 1985. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Rewind two more stories. Back to the same time I was talking Five about. Five years before you were born. 15 minutes ago. Yeah. Uh, just when I was going to Grace Simple and hanging out with Katie and all those people I mentioned earlier, uh, I was just learning more about music. Like I said, I was joining, I was learned how to play bass, I joined some band, or joined a band, joined some bands. Uh, and there was a band that came out around the time, this is, I guess 2005, so 20 years later, from 85, uh, a band called As Cities Burn. I know math. Uh, a band named As Cities Burn. And they are 100% different today and if you i mean if you guys are listening what's up how you doing it's good, it's good, it's good to talk to you uh good to be in your headphones instead of you and mine but it's probably not what's happening uh but they're we'll hashtag them we'll that's yeah, right away. i'll figure yeah. it out i'll figure it out i'll get a hold of them um their their first album son i loved you your darkest 
is this very, very honest view of the gospel and this honest response to to sin and what has kind of separated them from that and the temptations of this world. And they have, I mean, the tag that the title of it shows so much, just son, I loved you, your darkest. And they have, and they're, they're mixing in. I love, if you're into, uh, to, to post hardcore, hardcore, metalcore, all that fun stuff, let's talk, let's hang out. Um, but I love the early 2000s because that was when so much of it was coming out of the underground, beginning to get appreciation from record labels and some stuff like that. And there was just so many people just introducing new things into the scene. And this band did that musically, which I already loved, and then beginning to kind of break down the lyrics. It was just like this genuine cry of, of, of thankfulness to God, mm. this genuine cry of what a mess I am and I can't do it on my own, this genuine cry of, they have this song called The Widow, and I was going through so much with my uh, my parents' divorce at the time, this, this song called The Widow talking about, there's the two lead singers are brothers, them talking about their dad leaving them. And I was like, I could just literally, I remember sitting in my mom's yeah, beige, with beige minivan in the gray simple parking <laughs> lot being like, oh gosh, and just like trying to clean myself up before I go into youth group because I'm just, I'm relating so much to it. And it's an outcry of uh, emotion and just authenticity that you don't see a whole bunch in like the K-Love music scene. You don't see yeah. a whole bunch in that side. Not to say they're not genuine, but it's just a different, it was more upfront. Raw. It was more raw. More raw, yeah. It fe- it fe- yeah, you, you feel it immediately. And I loved that. And that began to shape um, not only me going into to playing in those scenes, to to screaming in bands, to playing bass in some heavier bands. Knocking your and, teeth out uh, the microphone. Knocking my <laughs> I still, oh, every day I hate it. Um, they just powderized, man. It was wild. I hated it. But yeah, knocking my teeth out, getting bloody on stage, sweating my sweating so much. And like Katie used to say, speaking of Katie earlier, she Hi, would Katie. say every time I would watch you, it's like you're leading an aerobics class. You're like <laughs> jumping and running and then going over to this side and jumping and running. I wish we had some video of that and we could overlay it with like <laughs> 80s could. aerobics. 80s we aerobics could make stuff. it a, an we aerobics video. Okay, there's make it our happen. product for this podcast. There we go. Yeah. Wait, wait. Jazzercise. Jazzercise. My bad. It wasn't aerobics. It was jazzercise. <laughs> there we go. So put some jazzercise music over me just running around. Call it lover size. That lover. Uh, <laughs> what was what was that? What was that dude's you name? You don't want 80s? to say that out really slow. <laughs> no, 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 no. no. no what was that dude's mind. name in the 80s who did like the uh, aerobic stuff with the what was his name? And, uh, <laughs> Richard, was it? No. Richard Simmons. Yeah, it yeah. was Richard Simmons. Yeah, can yeah, we do that? Into the oldies? Can yeah. We... I actually want to book a show today and all of us just dress as Richard Simmons. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, but anyway, so just, I'm I'm just thankful for that time because what yeah. it was, was it was the people that I was around as well as just the period of music that was happening. And it allowed me to, to hear and see from a different perspective, the truth of Christ. And it began to uh, encourage me in such a way that was pointing towards authenticity and yeah. rawness and how can I bring that to light? Not only in, like, I'm wanting to literally make this type of music, but also just in my day-to-day conversations, how I do my ministry, how I'm, how I'm learning the Bible. Like I want to approach it in such a way where, where this is, this is real, this yeah. is effective, this is true. Um, and it is, it deserves this type of zeal. It deserves yeah. this yeah. type of passion that, that I'm seeing from it. And uh, so everything kind of flowing from that was, it was, it's been a blast. Um, that was, I was 15 when that came out, about to be 15. So from like 15 to really 27, 28. So for about 15 years or so, uh, that's not math. It's actually 13 years, but I'm just going to say roundabout. Yeah. I'm, just, I'm just averaging. You're rounding. Yeah, rounding. Um, so yeah, a good chunk of my life, I was playing that type of music. I was doing that type of thing. And a lot of that started when I was 15 years old, just learning a mm-hmm. lot about it. And there's so many great stories of just fun ministry, fun gospel gospel conversations. Um, trying to striving to be a light in a place that's very dark, and yeah. uh, and loving on these kids and trying to show them who Christ is, and uh, having this. It was so creeper now that I talk about it. But what we would do at shows is we would have a like a bowl of candy. Of like we're gonna give away something for free, and candy always attracts people. So we're gonna have a bowl of candy <laughs> to have conversations with these people. And it, most of the time it was, "Hey, what's your name? How you doing?" And it was just those types of things. But then when I see him walk past, I'm like, "Oh, hey, Joe, how you doing? You having a good time at the show?" And he's like, "What?" Like, yeah, you stopped by a second ago. Like, he's like, oh, I'm so sorry. I don't remember your name. And I was like, oh, that's okay. And then it begins to have more of a conversation. And then when we come back, I get to see Joe again. Mm-hmm. I get to see how Joe's doing. Yeah. And there's a level of it that I don't like, remember names. I, th- I, I don't the remember only yours. reason. It, who <laughs> are <kidding>. you? <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Pierce. Pierce. I, have a, I have a note. <laughs> Hold on. Uh, Mike is to my Richard right. Richard Simmons. <laughs> Richard Simmons. Um, but anyway. 
I, awesome. It's because of that that I would start quizzing myself with names, which is hysterical because I'd still do it with youth, but I've I don't naturally do it with youth's parents. So Katie will be, or uh, sorry, Hannah will be like, uh, okay, what's what's Gage's mom's name? And I'll, which is funny, funny because they might be listening. So hey, I'd be like, I don't know, <laughs> but I remember everyone who was at youth last night. But every parent that I meet, I'm like, I just need to memorize last names. I mean, that's Mrs. Elkins. <laughs> there you go. That, that's Mr. Elkins. Yeah. <laughs> and just one what stinks too is I Carrie met I met a Carissa and a Marissa in the same right. day and immediately switched them. Yeah. So I was like, oh yeah. gosh. But when it comes to it's Caroline, for some reason, Brian, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Caroline, <laughs> look at my name tag. It's Big. <laughs> oh, that was Brian Regan. Hey, if you're listening, Brian Regan, we need a sponsor. We're thankful for Brian. Big yellow one's a son. <laughs> the big yellow one's a son. So anyway, yeah, that's one thing I'm very grateful for in my life, and it's still um, there's still so much of that that. Kinda... So you write a book on like how post hardcore shapes ministry. That's exactly. Yes. Oh yeah. How to do youth ministry from the post hardcore. There you go. Do you know there what, man? Go. I would sell. You probably would. <laughs> but most people probably now would be like, "What's post hardcore?" Exactly. They just have no idea. Just your. That's just the exactly. millennial thing, man. It's just is that awesome. similar to post Malone? No, just, <laughs> it's exactly the same. It's not even similar. It's the same thing. It's exactly it, the same. Post hardcore became a person, <laughs> and it was post Malone. So good. <laughs> Which I think he'd probably be okay with. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'd like to do. When I'm thinking about it, like two. <laughs> Two things I, I'm thankful for. Two people I'm Sorry, thankful for. Sorry, we're only doing one at a time. So, no, no I'm just It's kidding. affirmative action. So, <laughs> oh, <sorry>. man. Oh, wow. <laughs> I can make those jokes. During, during this season of <laughs> political unrest, uh, I will shove this in front of you. Uh, anyways. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> um, Richard Simmons. <laughs> my, so, I knew when I was 15, the guy was calling me to ministry. And so, you know, early age, kind of like you, Pierce, at that, about that age, I began to kind of be shaped by environment and certain people who got to put in my life. One of those was my dad, obviously teaching me how to walk with Jesus, even teaching me how to shepherd, how to be a pastor. Even at 15, he would take me with him to do ministry stuff. And so I learned, you know, the awkwardness of visiting people that are sick in the hospital and how you do ministry with them and how you love on them and are gracious to them. I learned um, the hard times that my dad went through in some seasons of church. So I learned a lot from my dad as far as like being a pastor and being a shepherd. But then he took me to the Moody Bible Institute Pastors Conference in 1999. I just graduated from high school um, and and knew I was called to be in ministry, knew that God was le leading my heart towards preaching, even though I was leading worship the majority of the time. And um, we're sitting at this conference. It was my first time to be at anything like this. There's probably, you know, 2,500, 3,000 people at this conference and uh, they're, they're just going through these speakers and uh, this, this old guy starts to walk up on stage and his face is all messed up. I found out later he had cancer on his face, had skin cancer mm -hmm. on his face. And so he's not very big. He's like feeble. He's walking up on stage. And I, I remember, I had no idea who he was. And I remember leaning over my dad and I, I was like, this is probably going to be terrible, isn't it? He was mm -hmm. like, just wait. And the dude's name is Howard Hendricks, Dr. Howard Hendricks mm -hmm. from Dallas Seminary. And it was maybe the most incredible sermon I've ever heard. And cool. it was that sermon shaped like how I go about preaching today still. Like That's the awesome. way he talked, um, I, I, I usually um, use a lot of personal illustrations when I preach. And I know that a lot of you who've been to seminary, went to seminaries who told you not to do that. But here's a guy who, um, he's, he's dead now, but was a seminary professor forever. And the way that he preached was he connected with people as he's mm. just like talking to you face to face yep. and made you feel like you were part of his life by the way that he shared his stories. And it so impacted me that really kind of shaped the way that I began to do ministry and began to preach. Um, so thank you, Dr. How Howard Hendricks for your faithfulness. Second thing, because I get to go to another one because I don't yeah. care and I'm doing it. <laughs> I want to say thank you to Ryan Dalglish for introducing me to the game of disc golf. Yeah, of course. Hey. You're welcome. Ryan, I believe, learned thank it you, from Lance your Dockery. buddy. Yeah, Lance Dockery. And then came right back to San Angelo, right? You were yeah. like, yeah, we came right back to San Angelo and was like, hey, did you got to try this, this thing out? And we had a disc golf course in San Angelo, kind of. Yeah, there, they were, still had there were 18 holes, but I think they had three of the actual disc golf baskets. And then the rest, and the rest of the posts. holes were four by four posts with a painted section in the middle. Yep. That was like what you had to hit. And so wow. when, when Ryan and I would play, we'd have to get real quiet when we get close to the, yeah, to to the hole, listen. to the basket, or which wasn't a basket, the pole. That was so, 18 years ago. Was it 18 years ago? Yeah. Which wow. it's kind of sad because I should be way better at disc golf after 18 <laughs> years than I am now. Anyways, but so Ryan introduced me to this game and I don't know if you realized what was what was going to happen at that point. I realized you were addicted because when we would go to have hibachi, which we did a lot because Cammie, who you were engaged to at the time, was working uh, yeah. or in school. She was working, I think. 
I didn't have a real job. And so you and I were on the disc golf course three or four times a week. Mm-hmm. And we were eating hibachi three or four times a week. Funny story about that, right? <laughs> and you, before you would load up your plate, before you would load up your plate, you would you would hold it and you would turn and pretend like you were throwing a disc. You still and do. You, and he, you would just practice with your plate in the line. It. Yeah. And I was just like, oh my goodness, dude. <laughs> like, he was so serious about I, it. When it was... I couldn't play soccer anymore. I mean, like I wasn't good enough to, you know, play past college and I, I needed like a competitive yeah. outlet. And now I've got this sport and I never played any sports with my hands growing up. I mean, I guess basketball kind of, but like this was a totally different world. And and it was also something that was intriguing because it's something I could get better at. It wasn't yeah. just something you could like just play and it could still just play and enjoy it, but I could get better at it. And now today, um, disc golf has become an integral part of the ministry that I do. I think yeah. I mentioned this in a previous episode, but Super cool. um, I'm in 2021. I've started this year in 2020, but in 2021, officially, I will be technically functioning as like a chaplain for the disc golf pro tour and the national tour. Yeah. If you want to ministry. sponsor Micah for real, we're being serious. I know we're silly a lot, but if you wanted to sponsor Micah for uh, a disc golf tournament next year where he could go and play and be chaplain and stuff like that. You're, yeah, that's you're what I'm, I'm trying to help. raise, I'm trying yeah. to raise money to be, I'd love to be at as many of the pro events this next year as I can um, to be able to do a chapel service at that event and be there to kind of be a shepherd on, on tour. And, and for those of you who don't know, Micah is also a pro disc golfer. Like, I am. You're ranked as, as a pro. Bad as a pro, if you could possibly <laughs> get. I am. Actually, my rating just dropped after this last tournament I played, so I am not technically a pro anymore. But <sighs> it's because of COVID. Sorry, I can't say it. No. Dang, Anyways, COVID. but on a serious note, yeah. So, so what I'm what I'm trying to do is raise money to be able to go to those events because for yeah. me to for me to give up a weekend where I would be basically booked to do another event, I need to be able to. Pay yeah, and I gotta, support yourself. Obviously, my family still got to yeah. eat. So if you are interested in that, please let me know. I would love yeah, to do that'd it. be but awesome. Point being, it, disc golf has become an integral part of my life. So thank you, Ryan, for and, uh, introducing me and to Micah, Frisbees. Uh, you know, like, uh, do disc golfers need Jesus? <laughs> you know? Like, <laughs> well, actually. <laughs> well, actually. Well, actually. <laughs> yeah, yes, but I mean, it's, it's really awesome that you've, you've built a lot of friendships. And uh, even in this COVID era, uh, you've been able to do some online virtual lessons, some yeah, worship. we've been you've doing led, virtual chapels, yeah. Uh, chapel services and stuff. Which we will continue to do if you want to check those out, even if we're doing in-person chapel services. Can you services. say who it is that you're doing that through? Is that okay? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a ministry called Eagles Wings. So yeah. my nonprofit is partnering with Eagles Wings. Um, so I'm going to take on basically that part of their ministry, the chapel service and yeah, building community super cool. in the disc golf world. So it's, yeah. it's pretty exciting, pretty cool opportunity. So it, who knew that, you know, throwing Frisbees with you 18 years ago would turn into something that's <laughs> Frisbees. How dare you call them Frisbees, man? Check out the, uh, I'll go ahead. I'll definitely make a note of it to put that in the show notes on this episode, yeah, yeah. Yeah. on the YouTube description, all that fun stuff. Check it out. Like really there's the, the previous chapel and, uh, sorry, the chapel's Golly, the services are on their Facebook. Yeah, like that, it is. Previous, yeah, yeah. 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 So go cool. check it out um, and then keep up to date with what's going on with Eagles Wings. That would be awesome. Uh, um, I will tell you that I grew up really awkward. <laughs> I'm still really awkward. I was going to say you grew up? Yeah. Uh, 1965. <laughs> 1965. <laughs> uh, I, was, I was born, right? May 1st, 1975. But oh, we're going, we're like, we're going to walk through your life. <laughs> <laughs> it was a cold I day. I was conceived. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, but all of my family in the States found out on April 30th that I'd been born the next day because of the international <laughs> day line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they found out the future. But anyway, like, uh, I'm just, I, I consider myself a very awkward person. I, I'm kind of flat um, when I'm done talking with people and I realize I don't have anything else to say. I'm like, all right. And I just walk away. <laughs> and I'm, like, I'm, just, I'm just, and I don't, I'm sure it seems rude. I just get to the end of the conversation and then I'm, <laughs> I, I don't know. I walk away. I'm done. Yeah. And uh, and grew up really insecure. Grew up with a lot of fear, a lot of depression. And and so I, I would say that my my closest friends really came. Uh, I started to develop closer friends in my early 20s. And so there were there were two guys, uh, Scott and Ryan, that I hung out with all the time. Ryan's a pastor now in Australia. Super cool story. Maybe on another podcast. Um, and then Scott is a, a, a children's pastor in San Antonio at Community Bible there. And uh, these guys were such great friends to me. They were both a year behind me in college. We became really good friends in 95. I was 20. They were 19. And and really helped me kind of, uh, as I was coming through those, these last three or four years of depression, were really good friends to me, just supportive of me. We all knew we wanted to be, be in ministry. 
Um, and then there was a buddy of mine named Jed, who's a pastor out in Dallas. We still keep in touch all the time. One of my closest friends. You guys have met him now. Super cool guy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Hey, Jed. Hey, Ryan. Hey, Scott. Um, these guys were really instrumental to me. Just, just good friends. And then um, Micah and I met in March of 2002, about six, about five months before I moved to San Angelo. And uh, you were part of a band at that time. I met you through the band, introduced me to you. And then in the fall, in November, in fact, uh, it's been about 18 years right now. Uh, it was, it was okay, like, yeah. yeah, I mean, it would have been a couple of weeks ago if we were counting, but <laughs> you and I, you and I got invited to do a disciple now in Ozona. <laughs> Forgot about and, that. uh, and it, it was kind of one of our first ones to really plan because mm-hmm. they didn't have a youth pastor at the time. So we were planning it for them. I think you did the curriculum too, didn't you? Uh, I think so. Yeah. And then you and I, we went to Sam's and we went to Walmart and whatever, and we played games and figured out games to play with the yeah. kids and all this stuff. And working on that with you was the first time we really, I mean, we had seen each other a couple of times by that point, but that was the first time we really sat down. We invested a lot of time in each other. You made fun of me while I was preaching, uh, <laughs> which would set the precedent forever of our friendship. <laughs> and now here we've been friends for 18 years. And was that the event where yes, it was. I took the Lord's Supper Bible? Yeah. So you know table? how some of the you know how some of these old First Baptist churches have these huge Bibles up on the front table on do this in remembrance of me. And then up on top of that table is this massive Bible. Well, they had cleared the stage for the band and cleared the stage for everything. So I get up there to preach and Micah sits on the front row and that huge Bible is sitting next to him. And I said, turn to Micah or wherever I, not Micah, you're Micah. I said, turn to Jeremiah or wherever I had people turn. And and he grabs this huge (laughs) Bible, this giant Bible and opens it up to the text and sets it in his lap. And I nearly lost it. Like it, I couldn't look at him again the rest of the sermon, but, but 18 years now, you and I've been friends and, um, and it's been, it's been really great. And then Pierce and I became really good friends now, seven years ago. Yeah. Uh, we started hanging out and, and we started hanging out. Uh, I was teaching a discipleship program that Pierce was part of. And, uh, this is part of the stuff where I'm awkward is like, I, I remember getting to the end of our first semester. We'd, we had gone through the and an outline of the entire Bible in the mm-hmm. semester. And I remember at the end of the semester, looking at you and the other guys that were there. And I was like, you know what? Uh, when we started this, you know, I mean, I didn't really know you guys. I was like, uh, you know, but I feel like we're friends now. And I, uh, what I'm admitting in that is I didn't feel like we were friends four months ago, but <laughs> no, we're yeah, friends exactly. now. You yeah. know? <laughs> and, uh, I, I'm just very plain. I usually say what I'm thinking or what I mean, but, uh, yeah. So the, these friendships that I've had that have, um, they have kicked my butt and appropriately, uh, chastised me and beaten me up and, you know, and, uh, <laughs> And have shaped me and shaped my thinking. Uh, I think those have been really instrumental. And then I, I would be amiss, I think, if, and now I'm going to make you guys all do it, uh, but uh, I would be amiss, of course, if I didn't mention Michelle. So my wife yeah. has been a, just a massive blessing to me. We met on my 31st birthday. We were looking at rings two weeks later. Uh, we were engaged a few weeks after that, married a few months after that. And, and, um, it, Micah, you've said this about her too before, or when I've said it, you've affirmed that you recognize it to be true. But like, I haven't ever known somebody who's just as easygoing and has as much grace as her. No, she's by far the most gracious person I know. Yeah, like she just, she just is like, okay, you know, and she's just, which is really great for a person like me who's yeah. really <laughs> stupid and weird and awkward and all this kind of stuff. And, uh, and, and she's just, she's just a blessing. Like we have yeah. a lot of fun. In fact, in a month, we're celebrating, or a little less than a month, we'll be celebrating 14 years of marriage. And it's kind of hard to believe that it's, it's, it's been, been that, that long. long. But it's it's been such a blessing. Well, she and, was so. I mean, watching. I got to watch you struggle through the ups and downs. You were of there life. when I met her. <laughs> we would play. We would play disc golf one day, one morning, and Ryan would be like, "I hate girls. I'm yes. never ever gonna date." And then we would eat lunch. At the end of lunch, he would be like, "Man, I can't wait to get married." So just like this <laughs> up and down. So watching yeah. you deal with that, and then watching you even deal with some of your like security issues. You talk about you would yeah. go through. Michelle was perfect because yeah. she is not just the most gracious, but probably the most encouraging. Yeah. And so you needed someone to be right there next to you yep. and would just build you up and encourage yeah. you and it's exactly yeah. what you needed. She she actually likes me. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and, That's what you needed. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I've hardly ever liked me. Mm-hmm. So if I was going to marry somebody, I needed somebody who actually <laughs> liked good. me. Yeah. 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 At least one of you. At least one of you. Yeah. One of us has to like me. I That's was so planning funny. on saving my wife for last because you always say the best for last. So Yeah, yeah. There you go. There you go. Nice. Yeah. Well, I, I'll start you off. As long as I have known you, you've been dating Cammy, and then you were engaged shortly after we became mm-hmm. friends and then you were married within that year. And 
I have never, ever heard you address her as anything other than beautiful. She was saved in that way from your phone from the beginning. I assume still is. Mm-hmm. Um, and and I have never heard you speak poor of her or anything. So go. Yeah, talk about Cammie. There's no reason to speak poor of her because she's amazing. Yeah. She's the best. Uh, just celebrated her birthday recently. Yeah. Um, How which, many family birthdays birthday. do you have in November? A lot. Everyone. Yeah. Except lot. for you and Hayes, right? No, or not me Hayes. And, uh, me and Aiden. Aiden. That's Aiden's right. January and March. Yeah. So Cammie hates this part of the year because she's technically two years older than me. Yes. This part of the year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. She just turned 41, right? Yeah. Yeah. In fact, side note, before I go on about my wife, there's a picture of Cammie and I on our wedding day hanging up at Cammie's parents' house. And the boys were over there and one of them saw the picture and they said, dad, is that you and mom when y'all got married? And I said, yeah. And it hit me. I got married. I was 22 and she was 30. I'm just kidding. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> I was 22 and she was 23. Um, but I, I looked at that picture and I turned to Cammy and I said, in seven years, Seth will be as old as I was when we got married. No. <laughs> Holy cow. <laughs> when did that happen? Oh, no. What the heck? I know. And she was like, don't you ever tell me something like that. Like, Stop me that. You shut your mouth. So, But yeah, we've, we've been married for 17 <laughs> years. Yeah, 17 years. Goodness. It's been amazing. Like I Yeah, oh three. Like Ryan and Pierce will attest to this. I'm probably not the easiest person to have a relationship on a long, <laughs> consistent basis. Cause while Ryan says like he just says what he thinks, I say what I think, but I don't really say it with any concern about what anybody else thinks. You know what I mean? Like um <laughs> Which I I'm, appreciate about you a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I just tend to be brash and sometimes like without thought and without grace. And so Cammy's been such a great like filter for me in that through the years because she can take it. Um, I think probably there's been a lot of times I've been too harsh with, you know, like not on purpose, but not speaking ill of Cammy, but like saying something and it like hurts her feelings. And I yeah. realize, oh crap, I, you know, like I should have said it differently. That's not how I meant. So she's been a great way for me to filter and build. And and you guys know this, I've been kind of in the last year and a half, kind of like um, soul searching to some degree, trying to figure out how to um, like shape my interaction with people on a more gracious, more concerned for other people level. Yeah. It sounds like I'm just a butthole and sometimes I am, but like it's, <laughs> my, I want to be someone who can be authentic and truthful and brash when I need to, but for the sake of grace and for mm-hmm. the sake of love. Right. And Cammie, I think has been the biggest, um, you guys have been a huge part of that growth as well, but Cammie has been the biggest part of that growth for me. Sure. And I, I gotta be honest, man, I, I have a ton of friends in ministry whose wives don't like ministry and I could not imagine trying to do ministry without Gosh, a no. wife that yeah. loves Jesus and loves yeah. people and loves to be in ministry. I mean, we, f- she, she taught, she was a teacher and a coach for the first, I think, three years of our marriage before we had our oldest son, Seth. And then she stayed home ever since. So we have been literally living without any financial security for the last 14 years of marriage. And not once does she ever, has she ever complained about it? Yeah. Not once has she ever said, I wish we had all these other things. She just rolls. And I think, honestly, I think she probably trusts God with money more than I do. So <laughs> she's even an encouragement in that. So love you, Cammie. You're the best. It's my turn. Yeah. And you can bring it. <laughs> Which, you can bring us home. I'll bring us home. Pierce I was, was a youth pastor thing, and this sixth grade girl came into his youth And group I was like, that's, and, <laughs> that's the one. Uh, well, you, you had mentioned. Yeah, how many years? <laughs> yeah. you guys? We'll get that in a second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> So actually, well, I was going to kind of tie into the story. So earlier, it was like, uh, it was kind of this catalyst that was set in motion when I was 12 years old. And what's funny is Katie. thinking with Katie. Yeah. Thanks. So Katie. What, what I, thanks, Katie. Hey, what's up? Um, so thinking back to a lot of with like, with Hannah, even though, yeah, still same, same kickoff point. But I think a lot of like my relationship with you guys as well, coming in 21 years old. So now nine years, we've been doing stuff together, which is wild. Um, and then since 2013, so seven, so seven years as well, it's crazy to think back to, but there's really one moment in particular that I think was a catalyst of so much of the growth of our, our relationship kind of between the three of us. Um, and it was when I was a complete idiot and I don't have to give how much details, no. uh, by any means, but there was just, there was a moment where I gave in a temptation pretty good. And just made I, some poor choices. I made some poor was choices. That the year you built the PC. Yeah, exactly. That was 2020. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to leave Apple and it just didn't work. Uh, no, nah, and uh, talked to you about it, Micah. Talked to you about it, Ryan. And uh, very different responses within the, <laughs> within just the two differences <laughs> of you guys. But I don't want to get into details of that. Later that yeah, week, we had like, a conversation. It felt like you were scared of me or something. No. <laughs> what you did was scary. It wasn't that I was scared of you. It was that like, which is funny because it, it's, it's true to form. It was, which I, I'll explain. You asked a lot of questions. Micah, Micah. asked a lot of questions. You asked a lot of questions. 
You told me exactly what you thought. <laughs> <laughs> and it was scary. Uh, I still love that. Uh, no, I know. And that's the yeah, thing. Yeah. So like, we, I think that was Tuesday. Because we had classes. We had a discipleship program Tuesdays and Thursdays. Yeah. That was Tuesday. I think Thursday night, you guys invited me. Or Wednesday night. I think it was just a course of a day. Y'all were going to meet up. I was on. I was uh, I was doing pastoral stuff at the church yeah, already. I wasn't, yeah. I wasn't brought on as an elder. You guys met that night. We were going to meet all three going to meet up the next day. And... Um, and that it it felt like a month it passed for me just to level up. It wasn't necessarily stress; it was or anxiety. I don't know how to, to define it. Um, but meeting with you guys that night, I I saw the picture of grace. I saw a picture. Uh, I saw a true picture of Christ when in the midst of a culture that doesn't seem to really highlight a lot of that. Um, and you had said something, Ryan, that night that's always stuck with me. Um, you had said like we we're joining alongside you to push through this. Obviously, some things are going to change for a little while because we want to get you out of this. Like we need to figure out that what's best for the church. We need to figure out what's best for you. What's best for for anybody else that might be involved. We need to figure out all this stuff. Um, so things will change. But I'm excited for whenever you're getting ready to propose to your future wife. I'm excited for whenever we get the phone call that you're having your kid. I'm excited. You said all these things lining up, and that was the moment where I was like, man, what have I? Like, what have I have forsaken? my my god-given community for the sake of 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 temporary pleasure in this world and I've, I've forsaken the things of god for this and this is someone this is a brother in christ who's looking me in the eye saying like i want to rejoice in you in the godliest way with the blessings that i know he's going to give you one day and now i stand here married with children yeah. and we've all been able to rejoice in that together yeah, we've we all been able to uh, i mean screw covid you guys weren't able to come to the hospital <laughs> no that sucks i was able to send you guys pictures and all that fun stuff and you guys um you did my wedding. You you played at my wedding. We all you served chicken and waffles at my wedding. We all had yeah, we yeah. all partied. It was a good time. I didn't think you were going to get married to her. Exactly. I thought that window it's, had and passed. That, and that's the whole thing is that because, because <laughs> no joke, Ryan actually told me we were on a trip. Yeah, and I, I said I said there's something going on between Pierce and Hannah, and when Ryan was like. That will never happen. It will never, it will end never up. happen. I, when I heard I, that, I, I was like, it to I'm going to make at the it. Beginning, <laughs> and then like a year later, I was like, no, nah, that's never going to happen. They missed their so, chance. Exactly. But you didn't miss I your didn't chance. I didn't miss Pierce. my chance. The thing is that like, I look back at that point, if that point of grace kind of hadn't happened, I wouldn't have stayed on staff. Mm. I wouldn't have met Hannah. I wouldn't have done all these things. Um, but it was literally that fall. It was that <laughs> fall that Hannah came to St. Angela. Mm. So it was, um, or maybe she already was. I forget. Anyway, anyway, it was that. It was around that year. She may have already been here. Anyway, all that to say, she was new if she was. Um, and it's funny meeting her because I remember thinking like, this girl is the most awkward little small town <laughs> Texas girl coming in. And I was the student pastor, and so she came in as a student. She was an ASU student, a college and, student, and a college, college student. Yes, student. I should yes, say that. Yes, Sorry, yes, for please. those of you who don't know, ASU is Angelo State University. She was a college student. And, and you were uh, doing a ton of college stuff back then. I was. We had we, a lot of students. We didn't students. have any youth, really, at that point. We youth. We had students. We had kids that grew up into youth, and now all of our college students graduated. Yeah. So now we're, anyway. So uh, what's funny looking back is I, at different points through her getting older, so I want to say when she, um, when she was 20. So we are six years apart. Uh, she was born in 1996, and uh, it was funny because she just we had to send our date of birth uh, to our aunt for something. I forget what it was, but it was for something. And She's uh, stealing your identities. That's what it was. She's like, hey, <laughs> just social security number, date of birth, ID number. Uh, and her first response was, so uh, what is it? Cradle, cradle robbing? Yeah. What is it? Yeah. yeah. She was yeah. like, she really robbed the cradle on that one or Pierce really robbed the cradle <laughs> with that one. And I was like, Jenny, you need to shut your mouth. <laughs> so, but you guys would obviously say to being around Hannah, um, she's even from when she was 18, she didn't feel like an 18 year old. No. There's a level of maturity that Very was mature, always yeah. there. And then whenever she came to the 456, she immediately got plugged in with you and Michelle. Oh yeah. Uh, she Ryan. was at our house every week. Yeah. For you were, y'all were her for adopted like, San Angelo like parents. Years. Yeah. Mm. And so there's a level of, there was already knowing kind of a level of her commitment to community, yeah. her commitment to the Lord, um, where she was maturity level wise that I would oftentimes be like, Nope, she's in college. <laughs> I'd have to remind myself of all these things. And then, Shoot, I guess it was 2016, 2017, kind of the fall into the spring. I was like, oh, God, it's Hannah, right? Like, and then I remember flirting back and forth. With her. I think it was the same time y'all were having kind of that conversation, flirting back and forth. Where I told Katie, Katie and I were planning a trip to go visit some friends hey, up in the, hey, Katie, she <laughs> even brought up going to visit some friends in the Pacific Northwest. And I was like, if this keeps happening, I'm going to date the crap out of Hannah. <laughs> like, because we were just flirting a lot back and, and now forth. You're married. And then what's funny is Hannah. I had this whole timeline kind of planned out and Hannah was like, hey, can we, can we like get some coffee or something tonight? And she just point blank was like, what is this? What's going on? <laughs> coffee. And, uh, and I was like, oh, she's like, so we're talking. 
what what's your intentions? And I was like, I knew it. I, sub girl. I know. <laughs> so I slowly turned away, slicked my hair back, and I was like, so girl. <laughs> no, it's just really upfront and honest. And you could tell just like her being visually nervous and me being like, your turn. And she's like, yeah, me too. <laughs> That's it. We're like, cool. We're on the same page. So, yeah. so have, like, a <laughs> have a good night. So then we kind of gradually went through these motions of like, Figuring out what it looks like. Being oh, more dude, serious about talking. My wife was so stinking excited. Yeah. She, what, Hannah texted Michelle mm-hmm. when you guys were like official. Yeah. You know? And Michelle lost it. She it was, was so it was fun to like… Because like I said, I was I was much, much older than her. She is six years. But it was fun to kind of more like re, relive that. And also like so soon at the very beginning, just kind of like embracing the reality. Like this is the one. Yeah. And embracing that alongside a community and then um just to kind of echo a lot of what you guys have said just just seeing uh, grace and patience kind of yeah. kind of personified yeah. <laughs> within the midst uh, of a household and building a family with somebody that that you trust that you have the same found that you have the same foundations with um somebody that I I I, I can't even put into words like how much I trust Hannah like it, it's strange or like how how comfortable I am and it's it's hard to um, I recently had a buddy of mine who got married and, uh, and he was like, man, I, I, everything you've said, just, I mean, I've only been married for almost three years now. Uh, but he's like, everything you've said, it, it is weird. Cause I've known it and I've known that's going to be the case. He's like, but you were right. Like it's, and he's just three weeks in and he's like, dude, there's so much just peace and like yeah. just comfortable, like freedom within that, that we can just be who we are. We can be completely intimate with each other, um, in a lot of ways and, or every, I mean, I screw that every way <laughs> and enjoy each other in every facet, living out what Christ has, has designed us to do within that. And, um, yeah, and it has been unbelievable. I think all of us yeah. would say that but like marriage has been nothing but a blessing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and when and and we've all started from a from a standpoint of viewing marriage from the lens of the gospel. Yeah. Yep. And being able to 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 see aspects of the gospel from your spouse is just is so it's so rewarding and it's mm-hmm. so life changing, but it also kind of kicks your butt in the process. Mm-hmm. Um, but just yeah, and then now being able, we had our daughter earlier this year. And your daughter seeing, is six years younger than Micah's youngest. So it's possible. You know, maybe there's a story. It is there. possible. Yeah. yeah. You're six years older than your wife. I mean, maybe that's crazy to think about. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> you better put a deposit down right now. Man. Yeah. Some I kind know. of dowry. I know. Right. Yes. Right. <laughs> I'll take your MacBook Pro. <laughs> there we go. Dang it. You can have that one. I bet by the time that happens, you, <laughs> not <laughs> then. I want it now. <laughs> yes. I need it now. I'll hold on to it until then. Um, but yeah, so I'm incredibly thankful for Hannah. I'm incredibly thankful for uh, my daughter and just being able to to build a life with somebody. I, I also recently this year uh, was I heard of a, I heard of somebody that was connected to my life that had uh, had cheated on his wife, and and just kind of the the heartbreak within so much of that. Yeah. And I was talking to my newly married friend who was just like, I can't even fathom it. And he was like, Is it is this a newlywed thing? Is this anything? And I was like, No, man, like. It's so strange because I can't either. And I just sincerely think that, first of all, looking at marriage through the lens of the gospel, and secondly, in the midst of doing that, you're building your life with this person. Yeah. Like, everything is shaped around this person. And, like, I heard the, I heard those things, and I began to— I mean, you guys have shared uh, marriage counseling stories as well. And I just had a handle just doing the dishes, and I just went up to her and, her and I was like, I can't, I can't imagine my life without you. Like, yeah. I can't, and I'm, I can't thank God enough for, Absolutely. for blessing me with this really young girl. <laughs> that came into my life. <laughs> she's 24. She is. She, yeah. she's, she's not a child by, yeah. any, by any means. We have a child. So, uh, all that to say, we're thankful for, we're thankful for our wives. We're thankful yeah. for each other. We're thankful for the people that have impacted us and yeah. have shaped us. And ultimately in the midst of all of that, our thankfulness isn't just a blanket statement. Our thankfulness is, is pointed to God. Yeah. Like we're thankful for how he has shaped and molded yes, us absolutely. and the people around us. And, and in the midst of, in the midst of joyful times, in the midst of heartache, in the midst of light, in the midst of darkness, like we said last episode, that's where our thankfulness lies. Yeah. And so today it was all the things that like, when we think about, they make us smile they make us teary eyed. Um, and in the midst of all of that, it just, I think we can all say openly and freely, it just makes us praise God all the more. Yeah, absolutely. That he has, he has blessed us with these people, blessed us with these experiences. Yeah, we haven't gotten here this. on our own. Exactly. We're not at this place. On exactly. Our own. Yeah. And I think that we, again, it's not about us. We've said yeah. that a lot. 
throughout this 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 podcast. It's not about yeah. us. So, I want to stress to you guys: Happy Thanksgiving! Happy Thanksgiving! While you're at it, go comment on the Garden Audio's most recent picture and say Happy Thanksgiving, Stephen, because yeah. he hey, needs Stephen. it. If you have an extra turkey lying around, mail it to Stephen. Uh, <laughs> Dude, can you imagine? So, like check a out cooked turkey. Just in a, just somebody just throws it in a box. Right. It's like the episode of Friends where they get that cheesecake in the mail. Yes. So if you've seen that, let us Joey know. has his fork. Um, I didn't watch Friends. Just Seinfeld. Micah, do you have a simpler hack for I us? I do. I do. Good, 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 good. Um, is it Thanksgiving related? It is. Yes. Nice. It is. So Thanksgiving and Christmas, I don't know why there's more of this in the holidays, but there seem to be more people burning candles mm. in the holidays. And one of the problems with burning candles is sometimes they spill, and sometimes they spill on things that you don't want them to spill on. Like mm -hmm. your couch, for example, if you ever knocked a... A candle over, you're carrying it, and it spills wax Gosh. onto something like your couch. It's it's an incredibly awkward thing to get off. So, simpler hack is don't try to wipe it up, don't try to scrape it up. If you will take a uh, like a Ziploc bag and fill it with ice, mm. and hold that ice, let the wax dry, hold the ice over the wax until it gets really cold, and when it gets cold enough, you'll be able to just peel the wax right up. And it'll oh, nice. right so that is so. Does it work on carpet as well? Is that what you I said, or you just said furniture? so. It's probably a little bit harder with carpet because yeah, you got something that gets down. Yeah. But it would probably work too. It's yeah, just so. getting it cold like enough that. where it'll peel up. You, I've never thought you, about you it. You know, speaking of candles, really quickly, just a quick plug. If if you like, oh yeah, yeah. If, yeah if, <laughs> if you like, uh, if you like massages, you know, you know, we're all talking about how much we love our wives. <laughs> they make they make these soy candles that are that melt into body oil. What? Like massage oil, and they're really they smell really good That's and they're really nice cool. and. You know, so I like when it cools down, does it solidify back to like like candles? Yeah, yeah, wood? yeah. But but you so don't let like it cool down. Your hand, okay, no, no, you just pour it. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'm thinking like <laughs> it's dripping off, and you're like, oh gosh, yeah. oh gosh. Nah, you need a massage. You know, your, your back's all tight. This hot oil, like don't get on the carpet. Yeah. I don't have any more ice packs. Yeah, yeah. So. If it gets on the carpet, then you you know yeah, get have the your ice pack. You rub your rub your bare back <laughs> on the massage oil on the carpet. Yeah, you need a massage at the exactly, end of the day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mike is losing it over here. <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> uh. Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> so keep crisis core. What could be simpler than that? <laughs> Check us out on social media. Uh. Wish everybody Happy Thanksgiving. You guys are great. Have a good one. Thank Bye. you. Bye. <laughs>